Hello, my crafty friends. How are you today? This is Amanda. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Michigan. Welcome. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today. I really appreciate it. Today I'm going to case another card out of the annual catalog. This is one of my favorite series of my channel because I take a card that I love out of a catalog and show you how to create it in a 5x7 size. We're going to play with the Simply Elegant Suite minus the punch. I did not grab the punch. It wasn't for me, but the paper and the stamp set certainly was. This uh, metallics cardstock is something else that we're going to play with today. There's a bronze, a gold, and um, a copper. And I chose the one that is perfectly perfect for our metallic twine here. And that is the uh, metallic that I'm going to use today. I'm going to start with a black piece of cardstock, eight and a half by 11. And I'm going to cut that down to a five by seven card base, which is of course a five, a seven by 10. Sorry about that. Uh, gonna take a one and a half inch off, a, off the short side and an inch off the long side and score it in half at 10. I'm gonna grab another piece of uh, scrap here so I can actually cut the right measurements instead of cutting this incorrectly so I couldn't get my um, my full panel out of this. But this panel is four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. Now if those seven eighths scare you, like sometimes they scare me, just go with six and three quarters uh, by four and three quarters or you could just do one piece of basic gray and um, cut it as a five by seven and don't do a top panel because you know, it's your choice in this particular card. Next, I'm gonna take a piece of this metallic cardstock and I'm gonna cut it at about seven inches by um, half an inch. And then I will cut this DSP. I'm gonna cut this again about two and a half inches, maybe, a little, maybe yeah, about two and a half inches. By, I, I do it at um, six and seven eighths, but really it's seven because I'm gonna cut everything down with my guillotine here in just a few minutes. Just for a easy swipe of the, um, the trimmer, I just decided to make it a little bit bigger and then cut it off at the end. I wasn't sure what size I really wanted to use for this DSP because of course, you know, this is all new. Uh, you know, they don't make uh, five by seven cards in the catalog. So I cut larger that I need and then cut down. So I just use little tick marks on the back, but you could always uh, attach it to your card base and cut it off after whatever makes you happy. I'm going to attach my DSP to the right hand side here and I'll take my silicone craft mat, my silicone mat, and I'll put some glue on here for absolutely no reasons, don't mind me, but I will need to add some glue to this DSP. And if you choose to um, just cut a core, um, half of an inch and let a quarter of an inch peek out, use your grid of some sort to line those up. But if you really can't do that and they're like, oh, I can't get this straight for any reason, just cut your metallic cardstock at two inches by six and seven eighths and then you'll just have a quarter of an inch peeping out. I like to be extremely frugal with my cardstock, especially my metallic cardstock. And so I just cut what's barely needed. And then that way I can save uh, my metallic cardstock for other things in the end. So I'm just gonna add these two together, have a quarter of an inch together. I like to use a uh, basic art glue. I'm sorry, my barely art glue here because it doesn't stay sticky after it's dry. And um, I do use my Tombow Mono once in a while, but not for this particular uh, portion. Next, I'm gonna go to grab my anti-static powder bag. This is a bag that's filled with either cornstarch or flour or something like that. And if you don't have that, just grab some flour and uh, stick it over there. We're just getting all the staticky stuff, the staticky bits off of our card. And I'm gonna really um, anti-static, de-static five by my card, if that makes sense. I'm gonna really put, all, put the um, powder all over it and make it good and um, chalky, I guess I should say, not really chalky, but you know, powdery. And then I will um, line up my stamp how I want to. Grab a acrylic block and use my Versamark ink to stamp that up. Now this is a red, ro red rubber stamp, so I won't need a, um, a foam mat underneath it. It'll get crisp and wonderful lines here. Very beautiful. 
Now, Versa Mark is a very sticky, it's called a watermark ink, and it's perfect to emboss with, wet emboss, uh, powder emboss, whatever you choose to call it. It's the best ink there is, and that's why Stamp It Up sells it. So a great ink, and uh, I love it for embossing. So grab yourself some Versa Mark if you don't. If you have another watermark ink, really, mm, you'll love Versa Mark. Next, I'm going to create little tick marks of where my DSP hits up at, uh, at the end so I could add another little filigree here. Is this called a filigree? Let me know in the comment section below. What is this little thing called that has absolutely no, <laughs> no name as far as I'm concerned? I call it a filigree, a whoosh, um, a pretty, something like that. And then again, I'll stamp that in uh, Versamark clear it's clear embossing powder clear embossing uh, a clear stamp a clear ink oh my goodness and then i will use clear embossing powder over the top of it and that just makes it a little bit darker and uh, brings that to life now i'm going to actually finish embossing because i left a few powders on top and i wanted to make it perfect then I'm going to use uh, a microfiber cloth and really um, scrub over that area after it's dry for like 15 seconds and get all those uh, powders off, either that cornstarch or flour or whatever is in this anti-static powder bag. Next, I'll use my stamp and seal and I will add that uh, DSP plus the little metallic edge uh, and I will add that again to my right side of my card base. Now, my stamp and seal was just about to the end and I was prepared to have it run out any moment except for the moment when it did I was like really it couldn't go just a little bit more but it has enough juice in it to do a little bit more so I'm going to add this here and then I'll add some stamp and seal on the back stamp and seal is a great um uh all over everyday uh, tape runner. It's wonderful. If it is not for you because that um, head has to be perfectly right for the tacky glue, the tacky tape to get on your paper, use the stamp and seal plus. You have to you use uh, minimal of it. You don't have to use as much because it is so sticky and it is always ready for you. Since I did um, end up uh, running out of my seal, I use some Tombow Mono. This is a perfect time to use Tombow Mono on the back where you know it's um, going to stick forever and ever. As you know, I did use my guillotine, and I like to use my guillotine when I have several pieces of paper together. I used my guillotine, and I cut off, and everything was square and straight and perfect. But I'll just add that, and see, there's just the tiniest bit of black peeping over. And because I did use Tombow Mono, I'll use my adhesive eraser and uh, just go along those edges and take off anything sticky. All right, now we have to do a sentiment here. And let me read you some of these sentiments. They're very pretty. Wishing you a wonderful birthday in a really nice script. Happy anniversary, which is what I choose to do. All the things you do are simply amazing. Thank you for you. Life has changed for you, but my love and support never will. I really like that. And true love stories last forever, which is just gorgeous. Next, I decided that I needed a reference of all of my dies and punches that could be labels because I forget about them. And then I am always doing boring circle label punches circle things you know what I mean I never get those really pretty um, shaped dies or punches and use those for my sentiments because I forget about them because you know they're in another area of uh, my craft room and so I decided to put everything together I'll go on a little bit more about that when I sh uh, do my craft room overview I'm really excited I get to uh, show you my working craft room and that just means I've been in it for a year and got it exactly how I like it so I choose to use the either hippo and friends or the tasteful labels I think I used this tasteful labels this time and how I was able again to decide which one I wanted to use is I have that little um, cheat sheet of the different labels. Now, some of the labels that are in my um, die cuts are just too big for this label system, but then if I know if I need a bigger one, then I have to actually go looking. But this one was a perfectly small one, and it's going to be great. Now, you're going to have to love my piece of scrap paper here of a very vanilla. <laughs> I think I was irritated one day, just ripped it to shreds, but I do save all of my scraps 
So that is um, how I come up with these really interesting scrap shapes. And then again, I will use my Versamark and my anti-static powder bag. Then I will use my gold embossing powder this time and I'll um, cut out, or I'll, I guess I should say, stamp out two of them and decide which one's perfect because I'm crazy like that. And then I will make this perfectly straight and use some uh, purple tape and then hold this down and run this to, through my die cutting machine. I love this little mini embossing die cutting machine. It sits perfectly on my desk and I love using it for about 90% of my dies. And then I'll have one perfect sentiment on a very cute label die um, that I chose that's not circle or just square. Something a little bit, you know, cutesy. And then I'll add this right here. Now this is the hard part, um, for me at least. I, after I put some dimensionals on here, which I probably shouldn't have done, I'm going to make um, a messy little circly knot thing. This is very difficult for me. It, it takes lots of practice and you'd think that a messy knot wouldn't, but I like to have all of my um, beginning and ends in one area. And uh, so I mess and I create, I don't, I fiddle with this forever. What I do is I roll it around my hand, uh, my, my fingers, I guess I should say, my four fingers. I put some tape down and I try to get, like I said, those two end pieces on the ground. And then I just mat it down. I mean, I'm doing this with my hands, uh, trying, to trying to tell you because I speak with my hands a lot, but I just push it. And then I fluff it up at the end. So if you're having a hard time doing these, which I know some people do, just don't stress about it. Really, put some tape down there, roll it around your hand, and then just push it down. Put your little top piece over it and then fluff it later. And heck, if all else fails, you can tear it up and, you know, pull, pull everything up and do it again. But really, it just takes, um, it takes less control, I guess I should say. Less control is always the good thing. I'm going to do our inside panel here, and I'll use some very vanilla for that. And this is at six and three quarters by four and three quarters. That's the panel size that normally is my go-to. So I'll have a, a lot of black peeping at the edge. And then I will emboss this really pretty um, flower, two flowers on the inside of that with absolutely no inside um, a sediment because I haven't decided on the sediment that I want to use right now. But I'll leave it just like this. Very pretty, very elegant, do you think? And I think it's a relatively easy card, except for that little, you know, messy knot, which, oh. All right, friends, that's my card today. I would love it if you subscribed and liked and did all those wonderful things. Please don't be a, subs a shy subscriber. I would really appreciate uh, you subscribing so I can get to that 1,000 subscriber goal that I have tried and tried to get to. Um, let me know if you like this card. Let me know if you'd make this card. Let me know if you saw this card. Just let me know anything in the comment section below. I love chit-chatting with you guys. You have a great day.